self-interest, self-preservation. As human beings, we can't help but be interested in our own self-preservation. We can't help but be self-interested. It's one of the strongest urges we have. Interested in our preservation, interested in our development, interested in our success. There's certainly nothing wrong with self-interest. But here's the clue. Self-interest must be enlightened as to what truly serves us best. When I found out that self-interest was okay, that was a big relief to me. Now, we're not talking about selfish. We're talking about self-interest. Self-interest needs to be educated, enlightened. Self-interest is willing to be benefited by service to others, not at the expense of others. Self-interest at the expense of others starts to be greed, evil hoping you go up as someone goes down, hoping to attain while someone else loses. I win, you lose. We call that the beginnings of evil, the dark side of our nature, wishing to benefit at the expense of others. Enlightened self-interest wishes to benefit at the service of others. A friend of mine tells this little story about a person she hears from about every three months or so. This guy calls to solicit money for food baskets for homeless families. She's happy to give her money to them. She was unfortunately homeless for a short period of time. And she knows the position these people are in. This group is legit. She checked them out. But after the second or third time this guy called, same guy, after the second or third time he called, she started talking to him about other stuff. Turns out this guy is broke, living in a hotel, looking for any construction job he can find, any job at all. But what's unique about this guy is that he donates two or three hours a night, every night, to call people and get money to feed the homeless. Every night from his hotel room. Now, most people would say this guy should use those hours every night to work a second job or a third job. But while he's way down on the ladder of success, he feels it's important to help those less fortunate than he is. He has a roof over his head. He makes enough to feed himself. And my friend says that every time she talks to this guy, every two or three months, he's doing better. He's digging himself out of debt. He's starting to save money. He thinks he'll be able to move into an apartment in another month or two. Now, recently, an interesting thing happened. My friend was talking with an associate of hers. She's single, lives in a big house, needs to find a handyman to help her out on a regular basis, someone who can build an addition onto her house. So my friend told her about this guy. The only reason this guy ended up being hired was that my friend's associate was touched by his dedication to service while he himself was down and out. Service. Success at the service of others. Now, this guy isn't rich by any stretch, but through my friend's network, he now has constant work doing things around several people's houses. And now he's in a place of his own, and guess what he does every night? He's still making phone calls to get money to feed the homeless. What great character this man has. Enlightened self-interest leads to wealth. Self-preservation leads to poverty. Somebody says, well, I can't be concerned about other people. I have to pay attention to myself. Well, then you'll always have to. Somebody says, I can't be concerned about other people's bills. I've got enough worries trying to pay my own. Well, then you'll have to worry about them for the rest of your life. The best way to get that monkey off your back is to turn your attention around. Once I understood some of this stuff, I'm telling you, it revolutionized my whole life. Now, self-interest is okay, yes. But here's what self-interest must be if you truly want to be happy. It must be enlightened. 
It says, don't keep your attention on yourself if you want your life to work out well. Turn your attention to others. In your own self-interest, be enlightened. Truly act in your own self-interest by making an investment in service to others. Next, if you wish to receive, now there's nothing wrong with wishing to receive. It's part of self-interest. But here's the enlightened part. If you wish to receive, you must give. Some people say, if you give, it's gone. No, no. Not if you're educated. If you're stupid, yes, it's gone. But if you're enlightened, chances are, if you give, you've invested. And what do we expect an investment to do? Return. Get back what you put out? No. We expect it to return multiplied. Bigger. Greater. Better. My father taught me way back. Son, always do more than what you get paid for. Now, some individuals might argue with that. They'd say, no, you're going to mess up the whole program. I know they're wrong. In my own self-interest, I did what my father taught me to always do more than I got paid for. Why? To make an investment in my future. Do more than you get paid for to make an investment in your future and it's paid off for me. If you're wanting that big promotion, are you going to go up to your boss and say, just give it to me? I'll work harder if you just give me that promotion. No, it doesn't work that way. You've got to do more in your current position so that you get noticed, so you stand out from everybody else. So the boss says, hey, we've got this position opening up and I think we should give it to Nancy. She does so much more than we expect. Just imagine what she'll do if we give her this promotion. You've got to do more than you're paid for. You've got to. It's an investment in your future. It's one thing to make a sale. I'm telling you, if you make a sale, you'll make a living. If you go beyond making the sale and serve people by keeping in touch, calling them before they call you, writing a thank you note, sales will lead to multiple sales. You can make a fortune if the customer is well taken care of. People who are well taken care of will open doors you can't get through by yourself. All of us have found ways to make a living. What got interesting for me early on was to figure out ways to make a fortune. You'd say, well, Mr. Roan, how would I deserve to make a fortune? It's easy. Render fortunes of service. People will do things you cannot believe for people who give them good service. Here's one of the greatest gifts you can give anybody, the gift of attention. In return, they will do extraordinary things for your career, take you by the hand and lead you to more people than you could meet by yourself. Always do more than you get paid for. Bonds to deserve, not need. Life was not designed to give us what we need. Life was designed to give us what we deserve. What we deserve. Once you understand that little life principle in your own self-interest, I'm telling you, it's life-changing. The ancient law does not go like this. If you need, you will reap. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of people out there are hoping it works that way. But no, it doesn't. The ancient law goes like this. If you plant, you will reap. If you sow, you will reap. Somebody says, well, I really need to reap. Well, then you really need to plant in your own self-interest. Your own self-interest needs to be educated in how to plant, how to do it so everybody wins, because life doesn't respond to need. You can't go to the soil and say, I need a crop. The soil just smiles at you. And here's what the soil says, don't bring me your need, bring me some seed. Bring me some effort, bring me some discipline, bring me some interest, bring me some service. 
Bring me these things, and I'll return to you multiplied by two times, five times, ten times. You can't come with need. You've got to come with seed. You've got to come with willingness. You've got to come with skills. You've got to be willing to learn, willing to change, willing to grow, willing to put yourself out, willing to stand up to the bad weather, willing to pull out the weeds, willing to nurture. That's the only way you get a return. Once you understand these principles, self-interest now truly becomes an exciting challenge, making sure everybody wins. Enlightened self-interest makes sure that everybody wins. Now here's another one. If you want to find, you must search. And if you search, you will find. In order to find, you must search. You must go to church. You must go to the seminar. You must go to the library. You've got to go to to the bookstore, you've got to go to the class, you've got to go to the training, you've got to go searching. Why? If you search, you will find. You'll find ideas, you'll find inspiration, you'll find hope, you'll find contacts. But you've got to be out there, on the search, on the look. Life reserves its treasures for those who deserve it, not those who need it. Enlightened self-interest, giving so that you will receive, searching so that you will find, making sure that everybody wins all the way around. Enlightened self-interest needs to be educated. Enlightened self-interest says, I will learn that life is not just the passing of time. I will learn that life is the collection of experiences, ups and downs, highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to act. You must have the discipline to act. Now here's what's important about discipline. One discipline affects another discipline. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and say, this doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. Some things may matter more than others, but everything matters. If you'd rather sleep in than go for a walk around the neighborhood, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather spend your money instead of saving it, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather put off a letter to an old friend instead of corresponding regularly, Pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather work late every night instead of going home and spending time with your family, pretty soon it will matter. It all matters. Every letdown affects the rest. If you won't walk around the block, you probably won't eat right. And you probably won't buy the books. And you probably won't attend the seminars. And you probably won't spend your money wisely. And after years of this, it all adds up. So the key to reversing this process is to start picking up the disciplines. It does matter. It all matters. Now, here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest. Every new discipline makes a difference. That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action... The action that you won't think will matter, it all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. If you start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to start eating right. You start eating right, it'll inspire you to get a book. You get a book and it'll inspire you to get a journal. You get a journal and it'll inspire you to develop some skills. Disciplines affect each other. Lack affects the rest of your life. The key is to diminish the lack. One of our greatest temptations is to just ease up a bit. To do just a little bit less than you're capable of. To take a little break. Somebody says, 
It'll just affect my sales. No, it'll affect your consciousness. It'll affect your philosophies. It'll affect your home life. It'll affect everything. No, you can't ease up a bit. That's what vacations are for. When you're at work, work. When you're on vacation, rest. Wherever you are, be there. If you think about vacation when you're at work, you'll surely think about work when you're on vacation. You'll just mess it all up. So be disciplined. Get involved. Do all that it takes to get the job done. Get your health back. Get your bank account where it's supposed to be. Get your family in order. Get disciplined. Be disciplined every day. When you set up the disciplines that give your life structure, miracles can happen. Multiplied. And I'm telling you, anybody who wants to make a drastic change in their income can do it. I was broke at age 25 and a millionaire at age 31. Everything around me was the same. I changed. I refined my philosophy. I read the books. I took the classes. Started looking at life a little differently. I'm telling you, it works. Now, there are six principles of building ambition that we will discuss as we go through this program. These principles work together, creating and directing energy. Directing your energy toward achievement. Directing your energy toward self-expression. Right now, we'll touch on the six principles in definition only. And later in the program, we'll get into each one separately. Here they are, the six principles of building ambition. Number one, positive self-direction. Knowing who you are and where you want to go. Accumulating the knowledge and being prepared for opportunities that come your way. Number two, self-reliance. Taking responsibility for your own life. Taking responsibility for whatever happens to you. Knowing that you have made the conscious decisions that are now affecting your life. That what's happening in your life is the direct result of your activity. Counting on you. Number three. Self-discipline. Ambition at the daily level. Knowing that you can reach your goals one step at a time. One day at a time. One activity at a time. And doing everything it takes to get there. Every day. Number four, self-enterprise. Consistently being able to create opportunity and consistently being able to take advantage of it. Being aware enough to see it. Skilled enough to make it work for you. Number five, working with others. We must make ourselves stronger to benefit us all. We must succeed at the service of others. Learning how to take your skills, enterprise, reliance, and direction to the table to create true success. And the sixth principle of building ambition is self-appreciation. Appreciate your accomplishments. Appreciate your potential. Knowing that in one day you completed all you set out to do. Fueling your ambition by fueling your appreciation of yourself. Each of these principles, when activated correctly, help to develop your ambition, your eager desire to get more out of life, to gain wealth, to gain prosperity, to have a better family, to build a better business. All of these principles work together in creating and directing energy toward achievement and self-expression.
जा